Hey everybody, it's Nate and Steph from Explorers.life. We teach people how to build DIY campers. Welcome back to episode number 18 in our Ford Transit DIY camper van build series. In last week's episode, we installed some two-way switches in the van. And in this week's episode, we're going to be installing 120 volt outlets. So let's get started. Here's a list of parts that you're gonna need for this project. 12 gauge, three conductor wire. Electrical boxes. Switches, outlets, and GFCI outlets. Face plates for the GFCI outlets, switches, and outlets. Lever nuts and spade connectors and some various tools that we've already talked about in a previous video. And before I make my first connections, I wanna talk about the breaker box really quick. Uh, this breaker box is just temporarily fabbed up just on the tabletop with an extension cord here. This is what would be coming from the inverter charger in a fully built system, but it's just important to know that it is disconnected. Uh, any, if this was connected, most of this in here would shock you. So this is really important here. Power would be coming in through the breaker. That would be powering the right side bus bars of this breaker box. And then we're going to be installing this 20 amp tandem breaker. So we can put two circuits on this breaker into the slot immediately to the right of the 50 amp breaker. It just clips onto that reel. And snaps into place. The wire that we're going to be using for this circuit is 12 gauge triplex wire. It's got a white, a green, and a black. So neutral, ground, and hot inside of that. And we're going to connect that black to the breaker, green to the ground bus bar, and white to the, the neutral bus bar. Now we have our 12 gauge triplex wire connected into the breaker box. Got the positive wire coming to the positive terminal of this 20 amp tandem breaker here. And then the ground wire coming to the ground bus bar back here. And the negative wire coming to the negative bus bar here. Now in the actual van, these are most, I think all of these are going to get ferrules uh, when we actually wire this up for real. But for tabletop demonstrations, we're leaving those off for now. To start wiring in the first outlet, I'm just going to cut this right here and then strip back the sheathing, strip back the wires. And now they're ready to go into the box with the outlet. Now there are a ton of different electrical boxes that you can use, depending on basically how you want to attach the box to the wall. I'm not going to talk about all the different types of electrical boxes in this video. That would simply take way too long. And I'm just going to be showing it in this, and then we'll talk more about electrical boxes whenever we actually install these onto the walls. Simply stab one of these little access ports open. Like that. Feed the wires up and through. Like so. And we're going to be using lever nuts to make these connections, same as we have in the last, I don't know, half dozen videos or so.
Now that we have our lever nuts on the ends of these wires, we can start making the actual connection to the outlet. So here's the outlet we're going to use. This is pretty much the most common outlet you can find at any uh, hardware store or anything like that. And the instructions are usually on the box of these come in, uh, but the ground wire goes on the green screw. The negative wire or the neutral wire goes onto the silver screw there. And then the hot wire goes to gold. So think of like silver as white. I don't know, maybe that's how I, that's how I remember it. But that's pretty much how that works. Now we can't, with stranded wire, we can't put stranded wire underneath these screws here. And so we need to use fork connectors like these. And I've went ahead and pre-made these, just a fork connector uh, crimped onto the end of wire uh, with heat shrink on it. And we're gonna go ahead and connect these to all the terminals in their appropriate spots here. And that's all done. We've got our green wire on our ground terminal there, white wire on our neutral wire, neutral screw there, and our black wire on the hot terminal over on this side. Good practice to go ahead and screw the remaining screws that we're not using into place. Now all we have to do is connect up these wires we just put into the outlet, into these lever nuts. green to green, white to white, and black to black. Do a little double check of your work. Green to ground, white to neutral, black to hot. And then this can just simply feed back into the outlet box like so. Screws go in their appropriate spots on the box. Just like so. Then here's the faceplate that would go on this. It's just a simple one screw you'd put right here. This faceplate would go on after the walls are up, but just wanted to show you kind of how that looked as is. Good workmanship right here. Make sure your screws are either straight up and down or straight sideways whichever you prefer on that. Now that this outlet is good to go, I'm going to go ahead and connect this into just an extension cord I've got going over to the wall. And it's important to know now that that screw right down there is hot and would shock me. So be careful with this now that it's under power. Turn this breaker on. I can turn the breaker on to the, this circuit right there. And then now we should have power here. We can go ahead and plug in this charger. And we are indeed charging. So just a little battery charger right there for our DeWalt equipment and stuff like that. But this is how you wire a single outlet. Now I'm going to disassemble this, turn power back off, and show you how to wire in a second outlet. So we have this all disassembled, and I also cut another section of wire here. It's got uh, just stripped off ends there. On both sides. And now we're, this is going to be the wire that we're going to connect from one box to the next box to our second outlet. It's going to pop out the other protector right there, throw that away, and then feed that wire into the same as we did earlier, 
all three of these are going to be connecting up to their color-coded spots on each of these lever nuts. And that is all wired up. Blacks to blacks, whites to whites, and greens to greens. It's really important to check your work here because I see that I missed a few strands of wires getting into that lever nut. But that's one of the great things about checking your work when you do this stuff. You slide it out of the lever nut, pop it back in place, and clamp it down. Now all of this can go back into the box the same way as we just had it, except with the introduction of a few new wires. Okay, and that one is in the box. Now it's pretty important to know, like you wouldn't actually be installing these outlets until the walls are up because these little ears here are gonna kind of get in the way. So tabletop demonstration here, remember. Now for the next outlet. This one gets wired the exact same way as we did when we did a single outlet. Just imagine if this was coming from the breaker box. It's the same thing here. So we're just gonna speed through it. And that is that. That's the second outlet in this circuit. Now I did use three conductor lever nuts here and I'm just using one blank. And that's totally fine to do. You don't have to fill all these up. Now there are two conductor lever nuts, but I think the uh, three gives you a chance to add a circuit if you need to, or also gives you a point to probe with a multimeter if you need to. So options here. Be sure to screw these down too, like I almost forgot. So now that this circuit is completely wired up, I'm going to go ahead and plug the breaker box back into my extension cord here for the sake of tabletop testing. I uh, just remember all this will be hot and so will everything inside of there. So just be careful there. Okay, and our light for our battery charger here is on. So this one is working just as well as the first one was working. Perfect. So now this is all good to go. I'm going to disassemble most of this and I'm going to show you how to wire in a 120 volt switch so that you could control something, let's say like a water heater or something like that that's buried in the back part of your camper or van uh, from the living area. So let's get started on that. So I went ahead and disassembled this first outlet, left the second one in place. I didn't change anything in there because I'm going to show you how to wire a switch into where the outlet was so that we can control this second outlet. So the greens, the, uh, the, the grounds, and the neutrals, the whites, those two just stay together. I just pulled the outlet out of that lever nut. So those just get left like that. Now the black is what we're splitting in our switch here. So on this switch, we have two hots and a ground here. We're going to attach the ground here and then a hot to the top and then a hot to the bottom. And it doesn't really matter which one goes to which, but we're just going to use those jumpers like we used in the outlets to make those connections right now.
And that is all done. So we have the green screw here, green wire, coming to all of the grounds here. And then we've got the black wires on this side, spade connectors there, or fork connectors there, going to these terminals here. One is coming from the breaker box, and the other is going out to this secondary outlet. Now we can put this back in place into the box like we did on the outlets. And that is that. So we have our switch here and our outlet controlled by the switch here. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in our breaker box, turn on our breakers and test it out. Okay, we're all plugged in here. Switch is in the off position. Turn it on and our light starts flashing on our DeWalt charger there. Turn it off and flashes a time or two more and then goes away. So this is working perfectly. If you wanted to wire multiple outlets onto a switch, you would just wire multiple outlets in the same way that I showed just a second ago, but this switch would just be the first thing in line. So this is how you wire a switch to control an outlet. And the next thing that we're going to talk about is GFCI outlets. So this is a GFCI outlet, and we're not going to get into like what this does on the internals or how it actually works. What you need to know about these is these add protection from shock in wet areas. So like kitchens, bathrooms, outdoor areas, things like that. This needs to be wired pretty specifically. Um, it's similar to the other outlets that we installed here with two screws on one side, two screws on the other side, except this one is particular on which screws get attached to what. So it's the same in the fact that this is the silver screw for the white wire, silver screw for white wire, gold screw for, for, uh, for the black wire, gold screw for the black wire. But on the back here, it says line. And what line means is these are the positive and negative wires, positive and neutral wires coming from the breaker box. And underneath this sticker that we should read that says the load terminals under this label are for feeding additional receptacles this wiring can leave this outlet without ground fault or ground fault protection. Read instructions prior to wiring. So be sure to read the instructions prior to, to wiring. But it's important to know that these two screws underneath where it says load, let's see, let me see that load right there, that needs to go off to the additional outlets in the circuit because this GFCI outlet will provide protection to all the outlets downstream of this outlet. That's the short of it. We're gonna go ahead and wire this up and I'll show you how it looks. Now I have all my pigtails attached to this. Now this particular GFCI, it has these little plates underneath the screws that we're able to put the wires right underneath it. So since it has this compression plate, we actually don't get to, or don't have to, and can't use the spade connectors as, or these fork connectors as they won't fit. But since this plate prevents any breaking of these strands of wires, that's fine there. So we have our hot and neutral, and ground wires attached to each side of this GFCI outlet, the line wires up here and the load down here, so from the breaker box and to the remaining outlets. The ground gets tied to all of the grounds in this box. So we're gonna wire all of this together and then I'll show you how it works. Okay, and this is all wired up. It gets 
pretty messy in a hurry, but this is the wire coming from the breaker box here. And we've got line right here. So it's our positive and negative coming from the breaker box to these. And then load is coming out of these bottom two screws, these two lever nuts here, going to that wire that's going on to this outlet here. So this, it, this GFCI outlet is protecting this outlet here. All the grounds, they just get tied together in the same lever nut there. So ground screw there, ground screw coming in from the breaker box. I'm sorry, ground, ground wire coming in from the breaker box and then ground wire going out to the secondary outlet. So let's put all this back into the box and fire it up and give it a test. Okay, this is all wired up here. Now I'm going to grab my handy dandy charger, plug it all in, get all the breakers turned on and give it a test. Okay, we are all plugged in here, turned on here. This is hot, so I'm not going to touch. And we can go ahead and plug in our charger here, see if it fires up. And it does. Top one. Same thing. Last one out here. If the top one works, the bottom one should too. Should be good there. Now we can give our GFCI outlet a test. Little button on there that just says test. Push it. That light goes away. And now our outlets no longer work. So that is working perfectly. We can hit the reset button. It flashed red, then flashed green, and then solid green. So that is working perfectly. So this is all complete. Now we're going to go into the van and we're going to wire our, uh, all of our outlets, our outlets, GFCI outlets, 120 volt outlets and all that kind of stuff. And then we're gonna circle back around once we get all that wired and show you how it actually looks once it's actually installed. So let's get to it. We have all of our 120 volt wires that are going to be powering all of our 120 volt outlets uh, run now. So let's talk about the circuits and why we're just leaving these like this. So for the circuits, we're going to have our breaker box mounted right here up into the wall, nice and neat. And we have three circuits coming off of that currently. So we have one that's coming up and back down to the outlet that's going to be right here. And then we're gonna have another wire that's going to come up to in front of the front window, uh, the front uh, the bay window basically. And these two outlets are going to be on the same circuit. The second circuits, we'll say the second two circuits, these are the independent circuits. They're running up across the top here and then over on this side. We have one circuit that's going to be back here. This is gonna be like the uh, the rear dinette or bed, depending on how we have the back setup uh, outlet right here. And then this front one is going to be basically the kitchen outlet. It's going to live right here. And we wanted a dedicated kitchen outlet and that'll be a GFCI outlet so that if we're powering induction cooktop or something high powered like that, they can have its own circuit and not be sharing it with any other loads that we may have going on. The reason that we don't have any outlets on any of these, and we're just leaving that for now, is because we're just not ready for it yet. Um, this is not really the part of the build where you put the outlets on because the boxes that we have to put the outlets in, that the wires go into, these really need to be mounted and the walls really need to be up before we wire the actual outlets in. We're going to have furring strips on the walls here that these boxes are going to mount to. And we don't have the furring strips up yet. We haven't got to that part of the build yet. So once the furring strips go up, the boxes get mounted to here. And then we can put the wires into the boxes. But the wires really can't be wired to the outlets at that point. They just have to be curled up at the back because when we put the walls up, I want to be able to use a roto zip to go in there, 
and cut out the hole for the outlet. So we're just not ready to actually wire these up yet. So these are gonna live just like this for now. But when we get to the walls portion of the video, we're gonna be wiring all this stuff up just like we showed on the tabletop earlier. And that pretty much wraps up this episode. Now that our 120 volt outlets are installed, it's time for some scene lighting and that's coming up next, so stay tuned. Now we hope you found this video helpful and if you did, it would be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Leave any questions you've got or new things you learned in the comment section below. And if this video inspired you to build something, be sure to tag us in your projects on Instagram with the Explorer Slack tag so that we can see and share your projects. Subscribe if you wanna see more DIY camper van building tutorials and we will see you in the next video.